This video is another in a series on CIMT, Carotid Intima Media Thickness Test. It's looking at the carotid artery, which is right here. It also looks at femoral arteries, which is down in the, the leg, the groin area, <clears throat> to look to see uh, if you've got this process going on. This process is, this is, this black thing is a clot. Um, it's inside an artery wall. <clears throat> The, um, <clears throat> this artery has plaque, and as you can see, it's not lining the, the original plaque was here. There's more plaque forming up here as well, and these brown, each of these dark brown sections. Now, <clears throat> this artery wall is, uh, is very thickened with what we call plaque, and these dark brown areas are places where the immune system has attacked that plaque and softened it. This narrow area right here is the intima lining, the lining of the artery. Um, <clears throat> that hot liquid plaque broke through. When it did, it touched the blood. When it touches the blood, it forms a plaque. Now, <clears throat> let's get back and look at this a, a little bit differently. And this is gonna be a fairly technical um, a video <clears throat> regarding a certain aspect of CIMT. Again, CIMT, carotid intima media thickness test. It's looking at the thickness between this intima layer and the media layer, which is the, uh, the muscular layer. In other words, it's looking for the amount of plaque that you have in your artery wall. <clears throat> to get to the academic point, the question is, is the common carotid intima media thickness the biggest part of the risk? Or is it an average of all of the lumps, uh, the plaques, discrete plaques? And <clears throat> as you see in this article, and you'll see in another article I, that I go into a little bit more detail with, uh, the bottom line is it's both. You need to look at both the average and uh, uh, the average of the um, the total amount in the common carotid and the average of the discrete plaques. Now, again, what does that mean? Well, let's get a little bit deeper. This is a, uh, <clears throat> this is a slide from um, um, friends, old friends and mentors, uh, Brad Bale and Amy Donin. This is uh, from a publication where they basically showed an image. And it's, I'm using it because it's, uh, they've got some great images. Uh, they've got a great course. I've taken it multiple times. <clears throat> it helps you to understand a lot of the concepts involving cardiovascular inflammation and uh, heart attack and stroke risk. I'd strong, strongly recommend that. If you don't want to go spend a full weekend, um, they've got a book. It's called uh, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. <clears throat> but this image is, uh, shows a good differentiation of what we mean on uh, common IMT versus plaque. Now, if you look at this structure, the structure on my right, maybe your left, I can't remember because things tend to be flipped when we're, we're doing this. There's a long uh, straight structure on one side of the image and it's labeled with CIMT. <clears throat> That's the common intima media thickness. And what happens with, this, uh, with the carotid intima media thickness test, the CIMT, is that uh, you get an ultrasound, so you don't get any radiation. Uh, these tests cost anywhere from a hundred to three or four hundred dollars, depending on where you go, who does it for you, and uh, sometimes travel expenses are involved in it as well. So what happens is you take a centimeter of this common carotid area, and you do uh, what? 70 or 80 slices, a lot of slices in terms of uh, looking at the, di the distance, this dark area, um, <clears throat> which is the distance between the intima layer of the artery and the media layer. Why do you do that? Because that's where LDL, or bed cholesterol, gets deposited. It normally gets deposited there as we get older, we're all born, uh, almost all of us are born with a very, very narrow, very small amount of that plaque, but then it grows as we get older. Now, <clears throat> we call that uh, overall plaque burden or common intima media thickness, but over here is what we call a discrete plaque. As you can see, this is up in the area called the bulb 
of the carotid. <clears throat> What is, the, what is the bulb? It's an area where you get the splitting into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. Anytime you have splitting in a tube like a hose, you're going to get, um, usually you get a little bit of a, of a bulb area at the intersection and you also get turbulence of flow. So again, that's why you tend to see, if you're going to see plaque, one of the most common areas to see plaque or a discrete large plaque is here in the bulb. <clears throat> now, if you take multiple uh, averages, then you may get a, a larger amount. If you look at this image here, you see two different things. You see the CIMT in, down in the common carotid, which is used to estimate arterial age, but you also see what we call a discrete plaque. And um, <clears throat> Anything uh, over 1.33, you know, you, you have different um, groups using different criteria. Some as low as 1.0 millimeters, some as high as 1.5 millimeters. Um, <clears throat> most of the groups I work with use 1.3 millimeters as saying you've hit the cut point for a discrete plaque. But again, what we're talking about to back up and, and repeat but uh, simplify. We're talking about well, what's more important, these discrete plaques are measuring the average in this uh, common carotid side. That's what this article was about. And as you see, both show additive value. So you can't really use just one or the other, you need to use both. And I'll go a little bit more into detail on it with this uh, with this one. The last uh, article, this one was in atherosclerosis in uh, August of 2017. Uh, I won't go into detail on that. I'll go into a little bit more detail on this one. This was in uh, Journal of Atherosclerosis and Thrombosis uh, back in 2011. Um, <clears throat> they basically looked, at that point they were saying, look, it's unclear whether, both, whether common CIMT or mean maximum CIMT should be used. So again, when you say mean maximum, you're saying, okay, this is a maximum lever, level. You have multiples of these uh, discrete plaques. Let's get an average. So an average of the maximum levels. In other words, an average of how many discrete plaques do you have and how big are they? How thick are they? So <clears throat> at that time, they felt it's unclear. So let's take a look. They uh, directly compared both measurements. They did a lit review, a uh, meta-analysis uh, up to 2008 at that point. Fifteen trials um, were uh, reviewed, and they looked at common CIMT and mean maximum CIMT. Uh, they compared both, uh, both of those, and then the studies that they used needed to have um, outcome measures, heart attack, stroke, um, that sort of thing to say, okay, did this actually predict reality? And here's what they found. <clears throat> reported, re reported reproducibility was high for both measurements, although a direct, direct comparison was not plausible. Um, they went on to say, you know, based, in, based on looking at that, maybe the mean maximum CIMT is the primary outcome. But you know what? We can go back and predict uh, common IMT. As, you've, as the science has progressed, you go back to this one um, on atherosclerosis, the, the 2017 uh, article, it's becoming clearer and clearer. You really need both. You need to get the average of those large discrete plaques, and you need to get your average age. Now, <clears throat> many of you have seen my uh, video where I, look, I, I talk about my own um, carotid intima media uh, thickness tests. This is it. When you look down at the um, my carotid age or the common age or the common IMT down in my common carotid artery, uh, you see that my age prediction was 52, even though I'm what, 60, I'm 61. Um, that's actually old news for me. You also We'll talk about my older one in a minute and the progression that I had. Um, the average CC at common carotid artery mean, IMT, and the average CCO max region. Again, these are the two things that we're comparing. 
Uh, my common carotid artery, IMT, was 0.68. My CCA max region was 0.81. So again, I do have a, a couple of discrete plaques, as you see down here. And um, both of those numbers are important to, uh, to looking at risk. Now, <clears throat> when you go back and you look at uh, my uh, video talking about my decrease in CIMT age, it was based uh, on this CIMT, which was done with another company. This is one of the reasons why I recommend uh, Cardio Risk. Um, I had this uh, from another company back in February 2015, October 2015, September 2016, and you saw a steady decline in my arterial age. From 73, uh, predicted arterial age, is light blue dot in February of 2015, down to 52 in uh, September of 2016, and again, the one I showed you a few minutes ago was with Todd's group and uh, again about age 52. But I still have that, um, those, uh, some risk associated with the uh, mean max uh, regions or the discrete plaques. Again, this all gets a little bit technical. It gets frustrating but in terms of trying to understand it. But let me go back and up and simplify again. Bottom line is there are different techniques of looking at this. One is to look at the uh, your arterial age. The other is to look at the average of your plaques, your discrete plaques. The other bottom line is it's clear. You need to use both the mean common and the mean maximum. And so um, <clears throat> don't go to a get a CIMT. If you have to use a company that's not giving you both the uh, pieces of information do that because what's clear is that CIMT is helpful. Despite what you've uh, heard with some of the confusion that John had on his recent um, CIMT follow-up, there is uh, nothing like getting a wake-up call with CIMT. Uh, let me show you a graph <clears throat> in terms of that first wake-up call that happened to me. Um, Again, I'm a preventive medicine doc. I've been doing preventive medicine for decades. I've stayed thin. I've managed my risk factors. I expected to do a, a victory lap after my first CIMT. As you could see, I had 73-year-old uh, arteries. That was a major wake-up call. I was one of these people that you see on the right side of this, um, of this graph. This graph comes, <coughs> again, it's a yeah, there's several different attributions to make here. It's an, it's an old study done in 2001. It was the definitive study for CIMT. Uh, you see Grace Clinic on here. You see Bale Donine. Uh, Brad uh, uh, Bale was at the Grace Clinic uh, in Texas. He, uh, he's used this image several times. And it's a great image. Uh, that's why I'm using it as well. Basically, on the Cafe de Caves, you saw several things. Number one, they took low-risk individuals, and they did this carotid intima media thickness test, CIMT. What did they find? Despite having low risk, 40% um, of these folks actually had plaque on CIMT. I was, so I was one of those people that thought I had little to no risk factors, yet you go and you look, you do this ultrasound, you find you may have a lot more than you thought. And this is a lot more common than you thought. It's sort of like um, um, prediabetes, insulin resistance. The UCLA study that John covered in his video that's saying, you know what? Half of us have insulin resistance. Well, you know, there's also a dot to connect there. Um, What's the most common cause of this kind of risk? By far, it's insulin resistance. So there's a lot more risk out there. All you need to do is take a look at your arteries. I did, and I got a major wake-up call. Now, <clears throat> a couple of other quick images to help put things in perspective. This, uh, these are obviously uh, images of cross-sections of arteries. The red, the red layer there is the muscle layer, the media layer, and the inner lining is the intima layer. Um, 
The gray stuff in between is plaque. All this on the left-hand side is stable. Um, it's a lot of plaque, but again, you don't have um, you don't have hot liquid plaque in there. But the point to this one is, look, on this top side, you have a huge IMT, Intima Media Thickness Test. On the bottom, you have little, very little visible. So there's a lot of variation in Intima Media Thickness. That's something to remember as you hear stories like the one from John where it said, I wasn't quite sure uh, how to interpret it. Well, again, it's clearly worth taking a look. Don't guess, test. I realize there are uh, things that, um, <clears throat> then com that can complicate this. For example, the thing that we talked about today, getting an overall av average versus looking at uh, uh, average of your peaks, of your discrete plaques. Um, what we want to avoid is what you see on the middle and right hand picture our immune system attacking this plaque, making it liquid, that liquid going out, uh, touching the, art the blood in the artery, forming the clot, the clot going to your heart or your brain and causing a heart attack. One last image and then I'll, I'll uh, finish it up. <clears throat> we keep talking about um, plaque and inflamed plaque. This is a this is a microscopic image. Again, what you begin to see is that as we deposit uh, LDL or bad cholesterol, uh, let me just orient you in this uh, slide. This middle layer, one cell layer, is the intima or the endothelium of the artery. This top uh, area where you have these red donut looking things uh, floating around, those are red cells. They carry oxygen, hemoglobin. So that's floating in the bloodstream. Down at the bottom, you have this uh, scaly looking thing. That's the, the uh, media layer, and that's the muscle layer of the arteries. If you go from left to right on this slide, you get more and more deposit of LDL and more and more attack of that LDL, that plaque, by the immune system. Over on the right, you have what's called a hot liquid plaque. Your immune system has attacked that plaque, trying to digest it. And again, you do want to get rid of plaque in your artery wall, but if your immune system attacks it and it releases into the bloodstream, you get what's called a, called a thrombus or a clot up here, which again takes you back to an unpleasant ending. Thank you very much. Um, as many of my videos have been, this has uh, been a long one, but we wanted to get into some details about uh, CIMT. We'll be covering more aspects of it in other videos. We also wanted to cover how to look at the quality between CIMT uh, providers. One of the key things is to note that they do both uh, mean max, meaning looking at all of the average of all of the plaques and how big they are, discrete plaques and how big they are. You also want to look at the common intima media, in other words, arterial age. Thank you again.